All right. Hey, everybody. This is Rush, and you are watching this YouTube channel. Um, so I got my hands on one of the nano cortexes here. So that's kind of upside down, but hopefully you guys can tell what that is. So um, I wanted to do a kind of quick review of the nano cortex. I know that a lot of people are starting to get their hands on these. If you've been watching this YouTube channel, um, I do a lot of tutorials for a lot of different modelers out there, including the FM3, the Axefx3, the FM9, as well as the Helix. I also program other guitar rigs, including the Quad Cortex and the Kempers and everything like that. So a little about myself. Once again, my name is Rosh. I build and program a lot of guitar rigs for a lot of different clients out here in the LA area, as well as online, as well as abroad, everywhere. Uh, so my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, Dweezil Zappa, Bush, and more. And um, I just love to give back to the community, show put, show some tips and tricks on how to get the best mileage out of your modeler, whatever you know, whatever uh, company you're using, whether it's a Neural DSP, whether it's Fractal Audio, whether it's Line Six Helix, or you know the Quad Cortex, or the Kemper, or anything like that. So um, I got my hands on one of these Nano Cortexes, and I wanted to do kind of a review and maybe you know describe kind of what I'm using it for and what I was looking for. Um, in a small, I guess, capture player modeler. So this is going to be kind of a quick review. Uh, I'm just going to be talking about basically what I think it will fulfill the needs for and what I think um, I would be using it for. So in addition to being a working musician and building and programming guitar rigs, I, I give a lot of um, you know lessons online. I have a lot of students online. And one of the things is because I travel so much for gigs and everything like that, um, I'm usually having to either teach on the go, I might be teaching out of a hotel room, I might be teaching at a coffee shop if I'm doing a synchronous lesson with um, any of my students uh, via Zoom or anything like that. But um, occasionally, you know, um, sometimes there, we may not be able to, you know, get the time zone difference correct. So if I'm in Europe or anything like that, um, it may be difficult to, you know, figure out a time zone that's going to work for both uh, my student and myself. So what I usually do is I'll end up recording a guitar lesson for a lot of my students. So one of the things that I've been using for the longest time to do that is um, I've been using the Apogee Jam X right here. And this is basically a little tiny interface, you know, totally, you know, smaller than, you know, a phone or anything. And then I just keep it in my gig bag. And what you can do is you can um, use that, plug your in-ears into it. It's got a... Uh, little headphone jack as well as a USB-C or USB-A adapter. And then you can use any uh, of the plugins out there in your DAW. So um, you can use the neural plugins, you can use um, HX, uh, uh, what is it, lines, uh, HX, oh my gosh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Helix Native, thank you, uh, Helix Native. And you know, you can record the plugins, you can use the stock logic plugins. Again, if I'm teaching a guitar lesson, I'm not going to be you know super diving into like the best guitar tone ever most of the time it's just going to be you know whatever uh i'm going to be covering with my student and then also with the jmx it allows me to you know record for any of my session clients on the go a lot of times what i'll do is i'll record a di stem uh direct guitar so if they want to reamp tones later uh but i'll also record you know sounds that i think would work and be appropriate for whatever the track is that they send me and again using a lot of different plugins. Um, you know, I'll use any of the neural DSP plugins or I'll use any of the uh, Helix native plugins to get some of the sounds. And again, this just is super convenient for me uh, when I'm traveling. A lot of times um, if I am traveling for a gig or doing a fly date, you know, I don't always have access to, you know, my fractal gear. It might be sitting in a Pelican somewhere. It might be sitting, uh, you know, waiting at soundcheck. Um, and then maybe I'll, you know, do a sound check sometime in the afternoon. I got a couple hours to be able to record a guitar lesson for a student and it would just be a nightmare to like unplug my fm3 or my fm9 bring it back to the hotel room plug everything back in wire it all up and then do a lesson so it's really very convenient for me to be able to just practice on the go um using something like the jam x with any type of plug-in solution now um so i was definitely very interested in the nano cortex and one of the other reasons why i was like uh, i wanted to use something that i can possibly keep in my backpack. And again, just as a practice rig, just as a backup rig in case I'm doing a fly date and, you know, any of, um, if, if any of my gear goes down or whatever, also it's useful to be able to, you know, practice backstage or whatever, or practice in a hotel room. And again, one of the things that I was basically trying to do was have a all-in-one kind of 
rig solution that would be something that I could use to record with everything like that. So let's get down into some of the good things about this. Obviously the form factor is great. It's really small. Um, I won't go into tones and everything like that. There's a, a ton of videos out there, but I mean, I've loaded up some of my captures on here um, and they all sound great, you know? Uh, so, you know, something like this. So these are some of the stock sounds, you know, main crunch sound, stuff like that. Really easy to tweak the knobs um, and you can also capture just pedals. So, um, you know, a lot of times if I'm traveling or anything like that, maybe I want to sit in at a jam session and, you know, all they got is a clean amp or something and maybe I want to, you know, capture some overdrives in there and use them, you know, with a backline amp. Again, it could be really useful for um, a lot of you all who, you know, maybe you're sitting in at a jam session and then you just want to have a pedal that's ready to go, you know, so you can get some of your your favorite overdrive sounds with you. So you don't need to bring a full pedal board. You'll just bring a little tiny rig. You can use this as a rehearsal rig. Again, I think it fills, um, you know, a very specific thing. I don't think it's going to replace any of you users who use a quad cortex or any of the fractal an all-in-one solution where you have all your sound, they're going to be doing a whole like full-on gig with it. I think this is going to serve more as a backup unit, a throw-and-go rehearsal rig. Maybe you're doing writing sessions. You just need to bring at least a couple of your go-to sounds with you to the studio with any of your, uh, you know, if you're working with producers or songwriters or anything like that. Um, and again, I, I threw some of my overdrive captures in here as well as some of my, you know, rig captures and they all sound great and they're, they're very close to the rig. I, I would be totally happy to use that as a backup. Um, and again, it's not going to replace any of my other stuff. It is just going to be supplementary. Um, I have a, a video here on this YouTube channel where I use basically the CRE guitars ascender. This is like the ultimate um, you know, travel guitar because the neck folds. So feel free to watch that video and you can see that like, you know, doing fly dates is a breeze. Now this might be a little bit, it, it kind of funny that if I'm doing a fly date, most people would be asked, well, why don't you just use an FM3? Um, and you know, 99% of the time I put the FM3 in my carry on luggage with whatever clothing I'll need for the gig. And then, um, you know, I'll keep the guitar in a backpack and then this backpack right here, basically goes underneath the plane seat so you know you don't have to check anything which is great um so one of the things that is kind of annoying for me sometimes when i'm bringing a full rig and keeping it in my luggage is um i do like to you know go to the gym whenever i'm on the road or anything like that and then i can't like always squeeze my gym shoes in there in addition to my regular shoes you might have to do like the weird you know tie the shoe to the backpack or whatever it's annoying um, and again, like, obviously I need to bring the rig, you know, the, the guitar rig is going to be the most important thing, especially if I'm getting flown out to do a gig somewhere. And again, watching some of the, I have a bunch of travel videos of traveling with fractal products, um, and doing gigs on the road. Uh, so feel free to watch those and you can see kind of my solution. But again, it, for me, you know, I think it's important to stay healthy on the road. You gotta, you know, hit the gym, hit the trail, try to run a couple miles every morning, all that kind of stuff, hit the gym. And again, if it's a gig where I'm just kind of playing one thing and I'd only need a handful of sounds and this may be the solution for the just using the nano cortex and again running direct or running into a backline amp and then you know you can still use in-ears and everything like that I always have my in-ears on the road I always have you know microphones on the road so I can record guitar lessons as well as record uh, for uh, any of my students or any of my clients who need me now so Again, there's plenty of videos out there talking about a lot of the features, a lot of the, you know, things that you can do with this. Obviously, in my opinion, your sounds are only as good as the captures. This is not going to be a modeler. There's no modeling on the actual, um, you know, the Nano Cortex. These are all going to be different captures that um, you can either download off of Cortex Cloud or captures you make yourself of your favorite sounds and amps. Um, and you can, you know, the knobs are really easy to tweak on the fly. I mean, again, again, really useful if you're in the middle of a gig. I think for me, if I need, if I'm doing a gig where I just need a handful of sounds, I think it'll totally work. It'll totally be useful. Now, let's talk about some of the cons of this. Now, there's a, a lot of weird quirks of this that I think a lot of people, you know, have already talked about. Maybe, maybe I'll just throw my two cents in there. Again, if you've sat through this video long enough, one of the main things is that I need this to be in like a recording solution, whether I'm recording for my clients or recording for my students for guitar lessons. 
and also being able to use it when I'm teaching the guitar lesson. So integrating it with Zoom and Skype and everything like that. Um, right now, um, I have you know a very streamlined process using the Jam X right here. And what that allows me to do is um, that it uh, allows me to just like, you know, teach out of a coffee shop and, you know, the Zoom uh, integration with a microphone like that is really useful. You can, you know, gate out all the noise that you need. And again, if I'm recording lessons for any of my students, I can always use, you know, Adobe Premiere to kind of like clear out any type of background noise or anything like that. So I needed a solution like this that would be the same thing where I can teach my guitar students on the fly. Now, there are some weird quirks about that. So obviously, um, some of the USB integration is a little weird. So for example, if you load this up in your DAW, you know, input one is always going to come up as the dry DI guitar signal from the Nano Cortex, as opposed to the um, process signal. So any of the captures, any of the effects that are in there are always going to be sent on USB three or four. I know that's really nitty gritty and, um, but it can cause some issues because what will happen is if you're trying to record a lesson, for example, if you're not super savvy with the audio, the guitar sound is going to be the dry DI signal, especially again, if you're plugging into zoom, the student is going to hear the dry DI guitar signal instead of the process sound. So you have to do aggregate devices or you have to do some trickery with using you know uh, uh, a plugin that I use all the time is loop back and then I, you have to kind of find those things it's just like an extra step it's super kind of annoying same thing as if you are recording you and you are plugging your headphones into here you can see my in-ears are plugged right here um, you're going to hear the di guitar sound and then you have to figure out wh which um, you know, recording enabled track is going to have the DI guitar sound and then process guitar sound. And then you have to do a couple things in logic. Again, it's just like kind of a, 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 a annoying part of the workflow. I, the last thing you want to be doing is kind of like dealing with your inputs and outputs as you're recording. Most uh, devices, modelers, everything like that, the process guitar signal always comes on output one or the input one. So like that's the first thing that you would pull up. The process sound goes there. I don't know why they flip that around. I don't know why the DI signal is on the first one. And again, if you look at the USB mapping inside the um, uh, the manual, it talks about that. Wouldn't be my first choice if uh, I was doing things. Again, if you're you're pretty savvy with audio, you can. There's some workarounds that you can do that, but it can just be kind of annoying. Again, I understand why they did that. So, for example, you can record a DI signal as well as the process sound in a recording software and then reamp it later using the Nano Cortex. So, you can reamp the sounds and adjust them on the fly with your DI guitar signal, or you can throw some plugins, your favorite plugins on there, whether they're the neural, the, you know, STL tones, any of that kind of stuff as well can be super useful. Now, another thing that's also kind of weird is um, that if you are a fan of the neural DSP plugins there and you want to use this, but maybe you're like, okay, cool. I got some of my sounds on here, but I want to use the DSP plugins to either practice, record, do whatever. Again, you have to do this really weird quirk. So what I have here in the background is I have the arc type, arch type Pliny X in the background. And so what you have to do is when you set up the, again, input one, which is the DI guitar signal. So it takes a DI guitar signal directly from the input here and bypasses everything. And you have to mute a nano cortex, and then it's going to get an, the DI guitar signal that you can process through the, the neural DSP plugins. It's super strange. It's not, it's, it took me a second to figure that out. And then now you can use your plugin. So for example, if I am just playing, this is from the nano cortex itself. Right, so you can see, you know, I'm tweaking my sounds here. Now, if I put it into mute by holding the second foot switch, so now it is, you know, in tuner mode. And so now anything that you are still sending in here can be sent to your computer so that you can use any of the plugins, whether you're using Helix Native or any of the Neural DSP plugins. So here's Archetype Pliny X. This is muted, so, but you can see, you can hear that I'm using the Pliny X plugin, so, you know, 
any of his, uh, let's say, Pliny's, you know, um, you know, uh, presets. You know, again, if you want to like do that, I, it's a weird workflow killer. I was using the JMX. It was so easy. You just plug it in, turn on the pl plug in, hit record, and then you're good to go. Or you can just practice or whatever. It's kind of a weird workflow hassle. So, and then again, the the entire time you're playing, the Nano Cortex's tuner is going to be activated. So you're going to be see you're going to be seeing the lights light up on here like the tuner. But again, now then you might run into some other issue where if you accidentally, uh, uh, you know turn off the tuner of the nano cortex and you're using the plugin then you're going to be hearing both plugins and then of course because it's going through your computer it's going to have some phasing issues you're going to hear something super weird and crazy in your ears um again weird workflow kind of situation not my favorite thing but again you, it is possible um and i know that is a big thing that a lot of people i've seen um have been talking about it's like why we should be able to use the plugins now I haven't seen anybody cover this. So again, if you want to use the neural DSP plugins or any of your favorite plugins with this as the recording interface, you have to turn on the tuner. Make sure you set up the input of whatever your plugins are to be input one, which is going to receive the DI guitar signal in the back, and then your plugins are going to work as normal. It's kind of a weird workflow. Some people might go, well, why don't you just use the neural, uh, you know, the nano cortex sounds in here. But again, this is going to be leading to the next maybe uh, critique of this uh, pedal. One of the biggest things, of course, that everybody's been talking about is it has a fixed signal path. So obviously, I think it's useful and important to think about that, that if you are using the nano cortex and you want to use, for example, a phaser, there's no phaser in here, but maybe you do want to use, you have a, you know, a phaser plugin or you're going to use, you know, a phaser sound from, you know, Helix Native or any of the other uh, offerings out there, what you can do, of course, is do exactly what I did, where you're kind of using one of the plugins, you're turning the tuner on on this, and then you can add all your favorite effects using any plugins. Um, and again, if you're, you know, there's no latency or anything that um, is going to be noticeable if your computer's fast enough. I'm using an M3 MacBook. Um, again, it's just a weird workflow. The last, you know, for lessons and everything like that, as well as recording for clients, I just have a template. I want to just pull up Logic, hit record, um, you know, because again, a lot of times when I'm using something like this on the go, I'm usually pressed for time. This is not my studio rig. This is not when I go to my studio where I have all my gear set up, all my amps mic'd up, everything. I have a great workflow there and I can get all the best sounds, but this is for something that's going to be used on the go. It can be a little weird. So, um, the plugin integration to do the tuning thing is super kind of like clunky in my opinion, but it's doable. Again, the fixed um, effects thing isn't like a deal breaker for me. Like I get it. Like some people are like, well, why can't we swap out, you know, the pitch block or whatever for a phaser or, or an overdrive? You know, that's a big, that's been a big critique. Um, again, not like the worst thing in the world for me. You, if you can get the captures done with the overdrive pedal into your favorite amp done, then you have your overdriven sound and you just make another preset with it. I think that's totally fine. So you can have a clean amp and then a clean amp with an overdrive on and you capture both sounds and use them as separate presets. Since the presets are gapless, it's not that big of an issue. No module, you can't capture modulation or time-based effects. So this is another critique of mine that I think, uh, and I was talking with Steve uh, Sterlacci about this, one of the things that we're both would be really useful would be the delay in here would be tap tempo. Right now it can only do fixed values. And again, the delay sounds fine. You can get a lot of, you know, very useful sounds out of it as well as the revert. But for a lot of you who are using tap tempo for your delays, um, you're going to be kind of out of luck. Maybe Neural will add that in the future, but as of recording this video, it's not, there's no tap tempo. There are fixed tempos. I think it would be super useful to be able to take CC values from an external MIDI controller to integrate with this so that you can use tap tempos as well as bypassing the effects individually. So for example, it does have a chorus, it does have a delay, and it does have a, have a reverb. And it would be very, very useful to have a um, CC number to be able to bypass those effects within the same preset. Now, can of course 
do the workaround, which is make two separate presets, one with the effects on, one with the effects off. But again, it's a little bit clunky integration, not my favorite. Everything is kind of like, well, there's a workaround, but it isn't like the, a super great thing. So if you are using this with a Morningstar MC3, MC6, any of that kind of stuff, um, I am a big fan of the Airstep. Um, that is a really great MIDI controller that can send both CCs and program changes. You're going to be left wanting a little bit. And then the other thing is with the MIDI is, of course, the expression jack and the MIDI jack are shared. So that is a little, if you're using an expression pedal, you can't have a MIDI controller. So again, one of the useful things is, for example, why I'm a big fan of the Airstep as well as the Morningstar products is that they can use an expression pedal in there to send CC values as well as using them to send you know, CC control numbers or patch changes or whatever. So that is, again, a workaround, but you have to buy another piece of gear and wire it up and get savvy with MIDI and everything. It would be useful to have something like that, but you still can't turn off the reverb individually or you can't turn off the delay individually. So you have to build separate presets for that. A clean sound with the delay on, a clean sound with the delay off, a clean sound with the reverb on, a clean sound with the reverb off. What if you then you might need a clean sound with the delay and the reverb on, you, you're, you're going to start running out of presets pretty quick if you need every kind of combination of that with multiple presets. So super clunky integration with that. I think hopefully in the future they release something like that. Now uh, with a firmware update, which leads me to the next thing. So right out of the box, tuner didn't work. Um, you needed to update the unit. I get it. It's, it's a brand new product. There's going to be some growing pains, but... Um, if you work with a lot of clients like I do, some clients need the functionality right out of the box because they may not have the, you know, they might not have the patience or the savvy to know how to update their unit. Now, um, I will say that Neural has a very great deep dive video um, on the instructions on how to use, you know, all the features in here. I think that would be very worthwhile watching, especially for those guitar players out there um, who don't want to read a manual and try to figure that out. But it kind of stumped me for a little bit where I was like, wait, there's no, how do you turn on the tuner? So got my phone out, updated, factory reset, and then now it's working. Again, little quirks, little growing pains. I get it. It's one of those things where if you're going to be an early adopter, these are kind of the things you accept, especially in a space such as this, where it's just a guitar product. Now, I think for me, um, once I figured out how to get around, you know, kind of the workarounds that would help with my workflow, mainly for recording, mainly for using it for lessons, mainly using it as a practice tool when I'm on the road, mainly, you know, like a little gig. If I'm just doing like some local gig that I don't want to bring the whole rig out and I just want to kind of sit in with my friends or it's just kind of like a low key gig, or if I want to like sit in at a jam session or something like that, um, whether I'm traveling or I'm in town, I think this is going to fulfill that need. The capturing, I think, is fine if you have a lot of sounds that you need to capture. I found that most of the sounds in here are totally useful for most guitar players. Again, thinking that it's going to be something that we're going to use, you know, mainly as a completely separate side rig as opposed to the main rig. So for all you all watching, you know, one of the things is, is this going to replace any of my fractal stuff? No, it will not do that. Um, I will always be gigging with either an FM3 or an FM9. Um, the Axe FX3 is also great, but it has been relegated to a studio tool now. I only keep it in my studio to record with because all the sounds in the FM9 and the FM3 are what I need on every gig that I do. Um, this is going to be, again, more of just kind of a supplementary thing. And again, as a backup, it never hurts to have a backup. Most of the time when um, I'm traveling, if I have my backup rig has always been a Tech 21 fly rig. Um, I've only had to use it maybe once, and it was because like a power cable broke or something mid gig, and uh, I just pulled the uh, the uh, Tech 21 fly rig out of the gig bag and just threw it on the floor and plugged everything in, and the gig kept going, and it was totally fine. And then uh, figured out a little bit later that the, it was just the IEC cable, you know, got damaged. So it's one of those things that I think can fill, you know, a very specific um, niche for a lot of you uh, people out there. I think if you are kind of torn between maybe getting a Tone X1, a Tone X, or a Kemper player, I think it's going to be filling that part of the guitar ecosystem. 
it it's not going to replace the helix it's not going to replace the hx stomp it's not going to replace the hx stomp xl or the fm9 or the fm3 i think those full all-in-one modelers are have not are not going to be usurped by something like this this is definitely more competing for users who are torn maybe between you know the tone x1 or the tone x or the kemper player i think personally it has a lot more functionality than the kemper player um but for those who are used to the Kemper ecosystem, I think you know that's going to be totally useful for them. But there's been a lot of, I've done a bunch of rigs with the Kemper player, and like the more feature, the lack of the more feature on the Kemper player is kind of a pretty tall order that they need to fill, because a lot of users need that more feature to be able to do some of the things that they need to do in there. Obviously, the effects in the Kemper player are just as limited as the Nano Cortex, so. Um, and then of course, if you're using the tone X, you know, there's no effects really, there's only like reverb. So, you know, the tone X one, um, I think can be useful for people who want something that's maybe more this size. It's going to be a lot smaller. Maybe you are planning on sticking this on a pedal board and then you're kind of, you know, pressed for real estate or something like that. Um, I think something like the nano cortex is going to be more for people who, might want a small rig maybe they have like a fly rig maybe they're only using a handful of pedals this is going to be like just your amp sounds you have a couple overdrives that you um like to use a couple of your different effects for me i could see myself doing a fly gig with basically this one overdrive pedal of my choice and then maybe a delay pedal of my choice um and then i could do that and you know the expression pedal in the back you know can be useful again to you know blend in delays and reverbs and stuff like that if you need to use it but um so you know, I've kind of, you know, belabored the point. I think it's going to be useful. I think it'll probably stay in my rig or at least in my gig bag as a, a backup for the time being until, you know, you know, something else comes out. So I think it's a, uh, you know, relatively useful unit for the things that I listed above. So that's all of that. If you guys need any help uh, programming any of your modelers, uh, whether it's the any of the fractal products, the Helix, the Kemper, the Quad Cortex, uh, would be happy to do that. Feel free to reach out to me directly, and uh, we can set up a session and do that. So other than that, if uh, you guys have any questions on the Nano Cortex, feel free to leave a comment below. I can also, if you need help, you know, just setting this up to integrate with your plugins. If you're using any of the neural plugins and you still want to use this as a, you know, interface to use both the neural plugins as well as the nano cortex sounds. Um, it takes a little work to get there, but I can definitely help you get there. I think that's going to be a big one for a lot of people, how to do that. And I think maybe in the, you know, in the near future, I'll probably put a tutorial up because um, I keep seeing people asking about it. Hey, I, you know, I bought the Fort Fortin X or the Pliny X or the, you know, Matteo Sassato plugin how do I use, can I use this and then maybe switch between the plugins and that totally cool. I've seen some people try to capture the plugins, which is kind of an interesting approach. Um, but again, you can definitely use the plugins, um, with very little latency or no latency at all. If you use the nano cortex, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. I'm falling with you. I'm standing with you.